What is going on everyone? My name is Andy and today I'm going to attempt to revive this channel from the dead. It's been around for probably more than three years at this point and at various times I've spoken about the Premier League, football in general, England, Man United etc. But never to a level of consistency and that's what I'm aiming to do. Will it be videos every single day? Probably not, at least not for now. But I want to make at least more than the zero I've done over the last year. Ultimately the proof is in the pudding. So I'll make a few videos, see whether you guys enjoy them, see how many I can get out. And then we'll just take it from there. In this one, I want to talk about have Arsenal and Liverpool blown their chance to win the Premier League? They both lost this weekend. Palace beat Liverpool, Villa beat Arsenal. And now there's a two-point gap to Man City. They've all played 32 games. Man City are on 73 points. Arsenal and Liverpool are on uh, 71. It's only a two-point gap. That's quite small, even with six games left. But it also feels massive. There's an air of inevitability the Man City will just go on to win this now. And it's not done completely, certainly not mathematically, but I also feel like it is done. I, I just don't see Man City slipping up enough to allow Arsenal or Liverpool back into this title race. And also, I think the fixtures the Man City have are probably kinder than they are for both Arsenal and Liverpool. They've been in this position a lot of times before. We know how strong they are for the running. Even if they go through the FA Cup and against Real Madrid in the Champions League, we know they'll be able to manage these last six games of the season. It's already happened, right? Against Luton, Foden and Rodri were both out of the team. So they rested a couple of players. They go and score five goals. Against Aston Villa, you know, one or two games before that, Haaland and De Bruyne get zero minutes. They win 4-1. They just find a way to win games while still keeping their squad fresh. And now some of those players have had a rest. There's less need for that rest going forward. And you can just play your strongest team every single week. Of course, there could be a twist in the title running. There could be a massive injury to certain players. And that could help. Like if they lost Rodri for any amount of time, that might be a way back in for Arsenal and Liverpool. But as things stand with the players that are fit in the moment, I just don't see it happening. I feel like in some ways Man City have already won the league. And there's lots of people saying there's going to be another twist. I heard it on the Rest is Football podcast this morning. but. I just don't see it, honestly. Like, I look at Man City's running. It's Brighton away, Forest away, Wolves at home, Fulham away, uh, Spurs away, and West Ham at home. So they do have four away games in the last six. But which of those teams do you think are going to apply pressure to Man City and cause them problems? Even Brighton, the next fixture, look, last year maybe, right? But this year, I feel like Brighton have done pretty well. And they've had Europe to tackle as well. But it's not quite the same team. They're not really playing at their absolute best. And Man City are just going to be too strong. You know, Forest, Wolves, Fulham, they're just not a, they're not games you expect Man City to lose. And maybe the pressure gets to them. Maybe the additional matches, etc., you know, will have an effect. But you just don't really see it. The one slip-up could be Spurs away in 37 because Pep and Man City have not done great away to Spurs for some weird reason. But even there... Postacoglu will set Spurs up, as he always does, to attack and get goals. And they probably will score against Man City, because a lot of the times teams sit in, and that just plays into Man City's hands. Spurs won't do that, so they will cause Man City problems. The problem is, the flip side, Spurs aren't very good in defence. Man City will get plenty of chances as well, and the chances are they will outscore them, right? And I suspect they'll go on and win that game. And here's the problem, I think, for Arsenal and Liverpool. Let's say they lose that Spurs game, right? And they win against Brighton, Forest, Wolves and Fulham, which I think is possible. Even if they lose against Spurs, you still need Arsenal and Liverpool to pretty much win every single game. And I just don't think that their, their run-ins will allow it. Like Liverpool, for example, have also got four away games in the last six. The next three are all away. Fulham, Everton, so you've got a derby there. Uh, West Ham, then they've got to play Spurs as well at home. And then their last away game is Villa away. That's not going to be easy. And then it's Wolves at home. So this is the problem. Like, I just don't see Liverpool winning it from here. Like, Arsenal, we'll talk about in a second. I feel like they've maybe got a chance. But Liverpool, I'm just, I just don't see it. Because I think Man City may only slip up once. And I don't think Liverpool can win all their six remaining games. One of the issues is... is, is one of the issues, I think, is why people love Liverpool. Because they are a little bit more chaotic. It's not quite as much control as there maybe is with City and Arsenal. And that's, a, that's great to watch. But I just don't think that's going to work. Like Everton away, Everton going to be right up for that. Obviously, they're still fighting for Premier League survival as well. Spurs will try and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. 
And in those kind of matches, you just have to wait and see, you know, who comes out on top, who puts their chances away. And look, if they fall to Werner, maybe Liverpool will be in with a chance that game. And it's at Anfield, right? So going into it, Liverpool will be favourites, but you never know. And Villa away is definitely not easy. So can they win all those games? I, I just don't see it. And I think, uh, honestly, I think City are that strong. You've got to probably win all of your remaining games, at least five of the six. Any less than that, you, you're just done. City won't give up that many points. And then Liverpool, uh, sorry, then Arsenal. The reason I think they've maybe got slightly more of a chance is because they can control games and they can keep the score down. But at the same time, their attack is extremely good. And obviously against Villa at the weekend, like full credit to Villa, right? They were great, especially in the second half. But that game could have gone differently. Up until the point Villa, had sc- uh, Villa scored, I appreciate they hit the woodwork. But in terms of expected goals, like how many chances they gave up Arsenal, it was like 0.4 or 0.5. And in the first half, they had plenty of chances themselves. One of those, you know, one of those chances goes in. Maybe that's a different scoreline. So I really, I don't want to take anything away from Villa because they were fantastic. They fully deserved the win in the end, but it could have gone differently. And generally, Arsenal do control games pretty well. Look at the match before that against Brighton. Absolutely fantastic, right? Brighton hardly had a chance. To do that away from home is pretty impressive. So I do think Arsenal have got a slightly better chance because their defense is so good. But so is Man City's, right? It, it just is. And if you look at the remaining games for Arsenal, they have got some which could potentially cause a bit of an issue. Chelsea at home, Spurs away, and Man United away. Now, are Arsenal stronger than all three of those teams? Absolutely, right? Man United and Spurs give up a lot of chances. Man United way worse than Spurs. Um, and Chelsea obviously haven't performed to the level Chelsea fans would hope. But they're all games that could potentially cause issues. And I just think they've got to play Spurs away. Liverpool have got to play them at home. Man City away. I, I just don't think there's enough. Could Arsenal win all th- all six of their remaining six? Maybe. There'll be a slip up somewhere. Man United or Spurs will take points off them. Or Chelsea. Or maybe even two of the three. I just, I just don't think they'll do it. Uh, obviously, it's all going to... There's a couple of other things which could help right? European matches this week. Let's say City go through against Real Madrid and Arsenal and Liverpool go out. That's one less thing to worry about. You're only concentrating on the Premier League. But that might also have a negative effect, right? You've just dropped points at the weekend. And if you look to the players' faces from Liverpool and Arsenal when they lost that game and it was full-time whistle, they knew that was an opportunity lost. To then go out of Europe as well, it might, it might just feel like the season is starting to come to an end a bit quicker than they would hope. But obviously, it does mean less matches. So maybe that could help. The only other time I could see Arsenal and Liverpool applying a bit of pressure is actually in the next kind of 10 days. Because this weekend, for game week 34, Arsenal and Liverpool play twice. So they play at the weekend and they play midweek. Whereas Man City only play one Premier League game because of the FA Cup. So if Man City win that, and then Arsenal and Liverpool go and win both of their games, then they would go ahead of Man City again. Of course, Man City would have a game in hand, and that would be that Spurs game of the penultimate get, uh, yeah, the penultimate match of the the season. But at least it would apply a bit of pressure. If you could go back ahead of Man City, that gives them something to think about. If Liverpool and Arsenal drop points in the next two games, for me, that's absolutely done. There could be a twist, right? I know people always say things like that. I just don't see where it will happen. So for Arsenal, that means you've got to go and beat Wolves away and Chelsea at home, and then for Liverpool, you've got to beat Fulham away. And Everton away. And I think that Everton game will be tough. I don't think that would be a big score for Liverpool. So have they blown it? I feel like they have. Again, I just feel like there's that inevitability with Man City that they will see it through. And I think Arsenal and Liverpool had to apply the pressure for a lot longer. The only thing is, next 10 days, like I've said, could they get two wins and go back above Man City? Possibly. And then it looks a lot better. I don't, by the way, for one second... I'm just not this type of person anyway, right? But I don't think there's any bottling going on here. I don't think Arsenal and Liverpool have bottled the title running. I just think they are both very good teams. It just so happens that Man City are also very good. And they've got a lot of experience in this position. But I think Arsenal are definitely a better team than they were last year. I think Declan Rice has been a great addition. Havertz has been brilliant as well. But also there's a bit of inexperience in there compared to that Man City squad in seeing these things through. A lot of the, the you know have these teams bottled it conversation that I probably won't partake in myself but it'll probably come down to what happens in the last few games like if Arsenal go and you know draw and lose the next two 
to, to get one draw, one loss from the next two games, then it starts to look a lot worse. If they go on and win the majority of their remaining games, it just so happens that Man City also win theirs, then I think you can give them a lot of credit. I think we should anyway, right? I think Arsenal are a very, very good team. It's, it's just that final hurdle. And I, I think this weekend was a big blow to both sides. Like I said, I think the Arsenal game could have gone differently. And to be honest, Liverpool the same, right? Crystal Palace deserve full credit. I think they were very well organized. The front three of Eze, Mateta and Elise did really well, especially on the break, like when they were able to counter. But Liverpool had plenty of chances. That game could have gone different as well. I'm not saying that Liverpool deserve to win, but, you know, they get a goal earlier on when they were applying pressure themselves in that match. And then that could have been a different result. But at the end of the day, it wasn't. And you've got to put those chances away. Lots of people will now blame Darwin Nunez. He missed a few chances, but so did Jota. So did Salah. I don't know. It's just one of those weekends. I'd be interested to hear from any Arsenal and Liverpool fans. Do you still think there's a chance or do you feel like it's done? Again, I appreciate it's not mathematically done, but it does feel it does feel over. I think the saddest thing is, and Man City fans won't be thinking this, this could be four wins in a row for City. No one's ever done that. And they're also getting way too close to the treble, which is far from done yet. But it ain't that far off. And that is a very scary thought. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Like I said, I will try and do a few more videos just chatting like this. I don't want to, you know, go, I don't know, too crazy with the channel or anything like that. I just want a second space outside of my FPL channel to kind of talk about football. Let me know what you think about the background. I just had that done. I can make some changes to that. Uh, and I will try and improve things in general. But I think it looks pretty good. I probably need a thumbnail uh, designer for this channel as well uh, at some point. So if anyone can do that, let me know. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I'll leave it there. Maybe I'll talk about how good Aston Villa have been recently. 63 points, by the way. Are they going to get a fourth spot? I think they probably are favourites at this point, even though Spurs have got a game in hand. But we'll save that for another video. Have Liverpool and Arsenal blown the lead? Let me know in the comments below. Is it done for Man City? Will they go and win, on the, uh, win the treble? Leave a comment below. I'll get back to some. I forget how to like you know, uh, outro these things compared to my FPL channel. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you didn't, no bother. I just uh, make a few more videos and see how it goes.